Welcome back, everyone. In our last match, the Super Hot Crew took down Fnatic, and I'm here to take a closer look at that game with Demon and the Fisho, starting with Picks and Vans, and coming out of all things and all the ADCs on the table, Reckless decided to go for Twitch in the very first rotation. Very surprised, and also meant Super Crew could easily make a comp around it to, okay, how are we going to kill this Twitch here? Remember, it takes six seconds now to stealth if you get hit during your queue, really, which basically means Twitch is such an easy target to shut down. So a bit surprised about their first pick. Really showed also that Fnatic wanted to do one of their standard pick comps. It was also interesting just to hear from Mr. Rales as well, talking about how he was planning to go Cogmore, switched it to Lucian. Lucian again working out well, going with the standard build. <laughs> yeah. It's the right build to go, and everybody's, I think, finally catching on. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, then talk about the beginning of the game, because Fnatic, as you said, their beloved pick comp, and it was working out in the beginning. I mean, sure, yeah, they got a hit before the real crucial team fights actually started. They managed to play well with it. However, Reckless never really got going in this game here. Twitch, I believe, actually was the first game since he joined DLCS where he didn't pick up a kill. So for him, it wasn't a good game. It was very easy for Super Crosser to shut him down. And Fnatic, in team fights, never really had the damage they needed to take down all these bruisers here from, uh, from Super Hot Crew. Yeah, and if you look at the team comp, it's the exact what same one they took down SK Gaming with. It was, you know, everything in there. They almost took down Alliance. Of course, that was the base raise fight. The pick comes from 4.9 with the Twisted Fate, with the uh, Reckless on Twitch, as you mentioned. It just didn't work in this one because, frankly, there was no one to pick off in Super Hot Crew. They were always together in groups. Also, uh, maybe to Fisho, is there something related to the fact that it took him a little longer to get going the Twitch and that was the window they had initially and they just didn't have enough damage because of it? Well, all, all in all, I actually just think Super Hot Crew's teamfight comp was so good against Twitch because he has no jumps. He's an easy target. If you look at the rest of the lineup from Fnatic, Twisted Fate, no jumps. Yeah, okay, you run Ghost Flash. Still, once you get locked down, you're not going anywhere. Lulu, same deal as well. I mean, there's every single target for or every single champion from Fnatic could be shut down or could be locked down by Super Crew. And once they actually got onto them or landed a knockup, Yasuo would jump them and the whole fight would just start. So overall, I just think Subaku had a bit of team fight comp. And once he got them to team fights, Fnatic weren't far enough ahead to actually do anything. Yeah, let's just, actually. Oh, excuse yeah, me. So I ahead. just wanted to say, you know, despite 4.10, obviously talking about potential AP top lanes, it's the first all AD damage team that I think there's one in 4.10 so far. And honestly, they didn't look too bad. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Let's actually take a look at one of the team fights where it's very well illustrated that they could pick off people. Let's pull that up on your screen. So Fnatic is actually ahead. We can just roll the clip here. It's a fairly long one. Fnatic group up in this mid lane. They take down the mid tower and then they turn their attention on to Kazing here on, on Brom afterwards. Get a kill onto him. He dies. Yeah. But after he's dead here, the rest of Super Crew are like, we can still fight this one and actually re-engage. Mima goes in. Selfie is out of position at this moment. So he's not able to jump anyone yet. He actually delays his ulti by such a long time in this fight. But because they're so tanky, all these bruises here from uh, from Super Hot Crew, because they have so much mobility, they can constantly get onto Fnatic again and again. Look, Selfie here. First he jumped onto Source, then he turns it over to, to Expect, and now back to Source, gets the kill here. Still has ulti at this point. Goes back in, and now Reckless is gonna be the target. The Twitch immobile, it's very easy. Once the knockoff actually comes in from Selfie, nothing he can do. Pop him, he's dead now as well. So overall, Super Hot Crew, they were so tanky with all these bruises here, and they could so easily get to the back line of Fnatic whenever they wanted to. And do you feel if they hadn't have just gone back in for that second time? I mean, there were six one up in kills yeah. just before that fight. And then Yellowstar came out, made that call, went for the hook. Do you feel if they hadn't have gone for that, they could have gone on to win the game? Because they were ahead. They were heading kills. They were heading gold. They were equal in towers, but they were looking stronger. So it's very hard to say, but often when you see this disengage or re-engage, once you land the hook, you're like, oh, let's go, let's go. We can kill this target very easily. And you kind of get a bit too overconfident. Mm. So yes, they got punished for it. And immense Super Crew got pretty much back in the game 100%. If they hadn't gone in second time, they would end up trading one for one, I believe, which would have been fine for Fnatic. They could have gone back to trying to pick up targets. So definitely it was a big mistake. However, credit to Super Hot Crew for taking full uh, advantage of it. It may just be another shot calling problem that, of course, we saw against Alliance the other week. Yeah, absolutely. Very quickly before we go over to the caster again, Rengar, the first one we've seen in yeah. the LCS. Quickly wrap up, what did you think of his play right here? The first time we've seen him here, of course, in OGN just this morning. So a bit of a slow start from Impaler, but once he actually got some items going and got to team fights, he was very, very strong. He built a lot of damage, but there was a ghost plate for him as well, so he tried to just focus on being somewhat of an assassin jungle. You can obviously also build him tank if you need it, but this time around they just wanted more damage. 
yeah, it's something we saw from the Korea, obviously, this morning. Uh, we saw the tanky build, and we've also seen the damage build. Impaler went full damage on this one, that's for sure. He wanted to get the damage down. And you saw, when he got caught out, he went down very quickly. But if he could catch on someone like Reckless, which started a lot of things off, destroy them. Yep, absolutely. Solid play here from the super hot crew. Now, changing players in the middle of a season can be difficult for a team to adjust to. And the Copenhagen Wolves' Unlimited tells us that his team is ready to start climbing the standings.